What an awesome message was delivered last week. I enjoyed being with you. I heard I had a little glitch. Somebody kicked me in the back. But I came back. I'm resilient. There's a prophecy. I had many people tell me, they said they couldn't, after a few minutes, they didn't realize I wasn't here. Because it's not me, it's the anointing. God gave us a word. He said, I'm looking for a people. How many are ready for a prophetic morning? I'm going to start this week. I won't get done this week, but I'm going to start. I am, I am looking for a people. And tonight, because I wasn't here last week, we're doing miracles and manifestations tonight. So you, let me tell you something. We're going to cut you loose. And I'm going to, I'm not only going to minister, I'm going to cut Pastor Benjamin and Bourne loose a little bit because they got something that they don't even realize they got. And they're going to release something on you along with, oh my Lord, it's going to be an amazing night. I look forward, I look, I'm looking for a people, a church that won't fight me. I long for a people who will be tender towards my spirit and gentle towards my leading. I can rest with one who fears my word and loves my commands. Then God gave me this word. He said there is an end time prophetic prayer and worship movement. That will usher in the glory of the Lord and will establish his authority on the earth. Let me say that again. There is an end time prayer, prophetic prayer and worship movement. <laughs> that will usher in the glory of the Lord and will establish his authority on the earth. Somebody say, God is about to release a new dimension of his power in my life. Now, I want to smack the devil here. I've been smacking him for the last week. I'm still in warfare mode. You have to understand, when we went over in Kenya, I went after every sacred cow. It was a Holy Ghost cow tipping services. We went after, I went after every sacred cow in their culture. I mean, you would have thought they would have thrown me out. Instead, they fell on their faces, broken before God, realizing what they were doing. Somebody say the devil's a liar. See, there's a lot of things that we do and we accept and we embrace and we, we act on that are contrary to God. And they fight the work of God in our lives. One of the things a lot of American churches do, I heard a man in L.A. Fitness goes to another church here locally. Wonderful church. And they were doing a miss, missions work in Africa. And this man was complaining. He said, well, I think I'm going to find another church because we don't need to be over in Africa. We need to be just doing stuff right here. But see, the Bible says go in that, that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you'll be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, a lot of people think, first you got to reach to Jerusalem, then you go to Judea, then Samaria, then the other part. That's not how it reads in the original. It's you do it Jerusalem, simultaneously Judea, at the same time Samaria, at the same time the uttermost parts of the earth. God told me to tell you that as we become outwardly focused, we will become inwardly filled. Are you all hearing me? So what we're doing right now as a church is the very thing we need to do. Oh, glory to God. Because what we do for them, God will multiply back for us. Somebody say what I do for them. God will multiply back for me. Now, we didn't even have a chance to get the video. You, the poverty is unbelievable. The, 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 most everybody walks. The, the, I went through a town, Junda, a, a town that we drove to one of the churches. And literally, you need a four-wheel vehicle to go on what is their main road. It is not paved. It is it, literally, I mean, we're going two, three miles an hour. That is their main thoroughfare. The, the field. You have big, huge fields 
filled with trash that had been dumped there for years right next to a children are playing. It is poverty like you have never seen in your life. It is filth and disease like you've never seen in your life. But I'm telling you, guys, please, those of you that sowed, which was so many of you that sowed the, 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 the last trip and are going to help us with this next trip, you got to understand the Bible says, he who gives to the poor lends to the Lord and he will surely repay. Somebody say, I got a promise for a harvest. There is an end time prophetic worship, prayer and worship movement. God showed me that there are simultaneously things going on that are happening in here in the Upper Room Church, in our region, and are also going to be happening simultaneously in Kenya. That's why I'm going to keep bringing it up. And God showed me that there is a new prophetic worship and prayer movement coming to Kenya. <laughs> Glory to, glory to God. That was before I knew about this prayer conference. Oh, Rabbi Shande. Come on. You remember the vision of the four angels? Purity, power, prayer, and praise. Shh. They all tie together. That was when Jesus went into the temple and cleansed the temple and said, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Shaka Rabbi Shande. God's going to revolutionize your prayer life. I say God's going to revolutionize your prayer life. He's going to revolutionize your worship life. All right. Revelation chapter 22, beginning with verse 12. Jesus speaking. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. Oh, we're going to I'm sorry, that just exploded inside of me. Somebody say, when Jesus comes, he always comes with his reward. Because there's three comings. I'm going to show you in a moment. There's three comings of the Lord. Now, don't get crazy. I'm not going to some harebrained doctrine. There's one second coming. But there's two comings before the second coming. I got to tell you, because now you're all written. Number one. <laughs> well, let me read it, and then I'll tell you. <laughs> to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates of the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. Somebody say a heart after David. Hey, David had a heart after God said he, had a, he was a man after my own heart. That's what God's putting in us. He said, I am the root and offspring of David, the bright morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let he who hears say, Come, and let he who thirsts come, and whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Somebody say three comings. There's three comings. First, when we begin to cry out, come Lord Jesus, Jesus comes near us in intimacy. The first great manifestation of God in these end times is a whole new dimension of intimacy with the bridegroom. Hallelujah. He is coming to us in intimacy. He is coming to us in a new dimension. There is an end time revelation of the bride of Christ and the bridegroom paradigm and the love relationship that we have with him. Get ready to fall so in love with Jesus like you've never known before. Get ready to be so close to him and so intimate with him and so filled with love and power and, oh, and, 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 and just joy. Ooh, hallelujah. Get ready to be so excited about every time you get to pray and you get to worship. Why? Because you're so in love with him. You just said, oh, when can I go and be with God? Oh, I long. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, church won't be a drudgery for God's people. It won't be a requirement. Come on, somebody. Prayer won't be that thing you struggle with because many of us struggle in prayer. Come on, amen. 
Get in there five minutes and your brain wanders. Right? Am I talking to anybody? But I tell you, that young man that just fell head over heels for that pretty young girl, his brain ain't wandering off to, off to sports after five minutes. He just looking at her and he's gazing upon her. He, he forgets his friends. Come on, y'all, Ben. Come on, y'all. Say, man, what happened to you? He's in love. He's in love. Well, you're going to be so in love with Jesus. You're going to be so in mint enemy with Jesus. People say, where'd they go? Oh, here, he's in love. Oh, she's in love. There she is again. She caught up. <laughs> she doubts. She... she just, she's singing all the time. We can't stop her. She's always, she's, she's like one of, she's like a Disney cartoon running around singing. <laughs> Second, he's not only going to come, but first he's coming near to us in intimacy. Then he's coming to us in revival. He's coming near to us in intimacy. Then he's coming to us with power and authority and fire and conviction and breakthroughs and healings and miracles and signs and wonders. Somebody say, come, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, come, Lord Jesus. Ooh. Come near to me in intimacy and come to us in revival. Because there's nothing else that's going to save America right now. I said, there's nothing else that's going to save Kenya right now. We got to have an outbreak of the Holy Ghost unlike anything before. We're under assault. America is under a demonic assault right now. Do you know that here in, uh, in, in, in Keller, do you know that it used to have the largest witches' coven in all of America? And the foundations of it and the originators of it are still here right now. I know it. The Lord has shown me in the spirit. I, even, I won't tell you, but I even know where they're located. Holy Ghost led me. I know where the spiritual stronghold is. And I know God told me, he said, the upper room is their assignment. They've even come in and visited some of the services. They're back there casting their spells, trying to fight us and everything. And God has allowed some of the battle to go on because he's, he's, he's getting us... Come on. That's why some of you have battled discouragement at times. And some of you saw a spirit of fence jump on people. You say, where'd that come from? It didn't come from God. And it didn't even come from the natural. It came from these demon spirits. But God's trying to strengthen us up to stand up. Because I tell you, that witch coven ain't going to win. We're just getting refined a little bit. Come on, amen. But God is going to raise up inside of you like a mighty warrior. And because this was the foundation that, that was the strongest in all the nation, no wonder God sent us here. God, y'all hearing me? You are destined by God to be a part of the front lines of what the Holy Ghost is doing. And God knows what he's doing, which means you're stronger than you think, oh Gideon, oh mighty men and women of valor. You might think you were hiding in the threshing floor, but God says, no, I've anointed you and appointed you to stand on the front lines. Woo! Shakara bashahane. Shakara. That's why, that's why, that's why, that's why people around you are going to look and they're going to say, what, what you, God's using that person? Come on. Come on. Come on. God's using that person? The other churches didn't even like her. The other churches even could have. Why did God raise her up? Because God's using the foolish things of this world to confound the wisdom of the wise. Turn to your neighbors and say, hello, foolish thing. That's a compliment. Jesus is coming near us in intimacy. He's coming to us in revival. And then, and only then, after an end time mass harvest like the world has never seen. People say, do you believe Jesus is coming tomorrow? No, I don't. Why? Because he ain't coming for a weak need, wishy-washy, backboneless, spineless, weak church. He's coming back for a church full of fire, full of power, full of the holiness and righteousness. My God. Finally, three, Jesus is coming for us in the second coming. Somebody say he's coming for us. 
Say it again. He's coming for us. But he's not coming for us until he first comes to us. And he comes... First he comes... Yeah, well, sorry. First he comes near us, and then he comes to us. And when he comes near us, and when he comes to us, he's coming with rewards. Whew. Oh, my God. Shakarabashande. Pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment. Shakarabashande. Shikarabashande. Shandarabakarabashande. Shiriandarebekarabababashande. There is an end time prophetic prayer and worship movement that will usher in the glory of the Lord and will establish his authority on the earth. Revelation chapter 5, verse 8, beginning with verse 8 through 10. Now, when he had taken the scroll, this is the beginning of the great tribulation. Jesus had taken the scroll, the four living creatures, or what released the seals. So this is before any of the seals had been released. The four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp <laughs> and golden bowls full of incense. Someone say, the harp speaks of worship, music, and music. And the bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. God says the thing that's going to be happening when the seals are released is the saints of God are engaged in a dimension of worship and prayer. And it's going to be so much that the bowls are full. There won't be a lack of worship and prayer. There won't be a 15-minute prayer service and an, or worship service and an unattended prayer meeting. He said these bowls are going to be full. And that is the key to the seals being unleashed. Are y'all with me on this? And verse 9, watch this. And they sang a new song. Someone say they sang a new song. Say it again. Say they sang a new song. One more time. They sang a new song. Put that very deep in your spirit because there is an end time prophetic prayer and worship movement that is going to usher in the glory of God and establish the authority of God on the earth. <laughs> Revelation 14 verse 1. Then I looked and behold a lamb standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his father's name written on their heads. Now I don't have time. In the fall on Tuesday nights, beginning, actually beginning middle August, we're going to take our school of Zadok, my Tuesday night sessions. We're doing the 12, the 400 right now, the 12 weeks of transformation. Then we're going to go in to an unbelievable revelation breakthrough teaching on the end times in the book of Revelation. So I don't have time to get in that this morning, but I'm telling you, the 144,000 is not a literal number. It is a figurative number. It's 12 times 12,000. 12 is always symbolic of the totality of God's people. Are y'all hearing me? So when you see the 144,000, it's not a literal number. It's a spiritual number. It's a figurative number talking about the end time saints. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, verse 2, and like the voice of loud thunder. And I heard the sound of harpists, there it is again, playing their harps. They sang, as it were, a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. Can I, can I, please. Now, we've got a picture. But these were not standing in heaven, these 144,000. They were standing in the earth. 
So he's saying, now we just saw it back there, the ones that all unleashed the seal, they had the harps and they sang a new song. Now we're seeing the same image again with the 144,000. They're here on the earth, but they're singing before the elders and before the throne of God. Because God's tearing down the wall between the natural realm and the heavenly realm. And we're going to enter into the worship of heaven. My God, my God, my God, my God. And God is saying, watch what he says. Uh, someone say, this is us. Say it again. Say, this is us. I'm going to move quickly. I only give you a little bit today. Say it again. This is us. Okay. They sang, as it were, a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders, and no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. So God says, I'm going to put an end time anointing upon an end time generation, and they're going to get prophetic songs that that will literally penetrate the natural and go right up to the throne of God. Come on, come on. God is about to release a prophetic prayer and worship movement that will usher in the glory of the Lord and establish the authority of God on the earth. These are the ones. Now it's going to tell us who they are. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. That speaks of the church washed in the blood. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. The only ones that are going to enter in this end time prophetic movement are those who live holy before God and those who are sensitive to the voice of the Spirit. Huh? They're tender towards the leading of His Spirit and gentle towards Him, and they love Him, and they're going after Him, and they're pursuing Him. And if He says, turn this way, they go this way. If He says, turn that way, they go that way. How many want to be a part of that end time movement? I know you do. I know you do. This is the upper room. I know you do. Woo, glory to God. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They are redeemed from among men. So God says, I'm picking out. I'm choosing out. I'm looking for those who are radical in holiness and radical in pursuit of me and radical in obedience, and I'm going to mark them, and I'm going to pick them out, and I'm going to put an end-time prophetic prayer and worship anointing upon them, and I'm going to give them songs. I'm going to give them songs from heaven that nobody knows. You say, I can't sing. You will. I said, you will. I said, you will. It'll bubble up on the inside of you. It'll come out of you. I said you will. And you ain't going to whisper it to yourself. Because it's going to shake things. I said it's going to shake things. Oh, my God. I got to get there. And in their mouth was found no deceit. The lying Christians is coming to an end. For they are without fault before the throne of God. Woo! Glory to God. They said to the first fruits, James 1.17 says this, of his own will he brought forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creation. And Ephesians 5.26 and 27 talks about us not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that we should be holy and without blame. Now let's go to Isaiah quickly. I'm moving. I got to get here. Isaiah 42. Is that beginning with verse 10? Are you ready to get some? Somebody say this is an end time anointing. You're going to move into a new song that has power to bring in the glory and to establish God's authority. When I was in Kenya, we've got the testimony. I was in this one church. Place was pretty full, hundreds of people out, right in the middle of that poor, poor neighborhood I told you about. I just got up at the platform, didn't even preach. I just began to worship, began to sing. As I began to sing, the presence of God flooded that place. Power of God fell. People start, devils started coming out. People started getting delivered. People started getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. The pastor couldn't even speak. He couldn't even stand up. I started singing prophecies over people. And the leaders came to me and said, we have never heard nor seen anything like this. You can literally feel the demonic atmosphere transforming. 
You could feel it being chastened and broken out. Why? Because God is releasing an end time prophetic prayer and worship movement that will usher in the glory of the Lord and establish his authority on the earth. In fact, we got to declare that. I've been saying it, but I got to get you to say it. Someone say, God, God is releasing a prophetic prayer and worship movement that will usher in the glory of the Lord and will establish his authority on the earth. Isaiah 42, verse 10. Sing to the Lord a new song. There it is again. And his praise from the ends of the earth. And you will go down to the sea, which speaks of lost humanity. The sea always speaks of the mass of humanity. You will go down to the sea and all that is in it. You coastlands and you inhabitants of them. Let the wilderness and its cities lift up their voice. The villages that Kedar inhabits. Let the inhabitants of Selah sing. Someone say, sing a new song. Say it again, say, sing a new song. God is saying, and I'm going to show you here, but God is saying that this end time prophetic prayer and worship movement that will usher in the glory of the Lord and establish his authority on the earth will penetrate into realms of the harvest that our preaching and our ministry work now has never been able to do. My God. My God. My God. Woo. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Verse 13. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. The Lord. Now, this gives us an identity. This next verse. Verse 13 tells us when this is going to happen. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud. He shall prevail against his enemies. Wait, wait, what is he saying? How, when is Jesus going to finally prevail against his enemies? At the second coming. <laughs> this is so good. So he's saying, when I release this end time prophetic new song anointing, it's going to stir up my zeal. I'm going to step up as a man of war. The Bible says in Psalm 968, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. For the Lord, his God is established. God is enthroned upon the praises of his people Israel. And that word praises is Tehillah, which means a new song. Oh, my God. God's authority is established upon a new song of the Lord. And when we sing that new song, he will arise and his enemies will be scattered. Is this getting a little deep for you? Someone say, I got it. Say it again. Say, I got it. Say it again. Say, I got it. Whew. Psalm 40, verse 3. He has put a new song. In my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Well, they'll see what? They'll see the new song. They'll see the way I worship. They'll see the way you worship and the way you pray. And there'll be such a revelation of God that there will be the fear of the Lord. The fear of the, listen, stop listening to people saying that there's no such, the fear of the Lord is not for Christians. We're not talking about being afraid of them. The world of difference. Come on, come on. We're talking about being in awe. And the Bible even says that he's close to those who tremble at his word. But we're not afraid of him. Why? We got the blood. Come on, amen. We got the mercy seat. So we're not afraid of him, but the Bible says, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. There'll be such a revelation of God that people who've been engaging in evil will then begin to run away from it because of the revelation of God that will happen through the new song coming out of the mouth of his people. Are y'all hearing me? Someone said the devil's a liar. Watch what, watch what he says this in Psalm 96. Ooh, this is good. 
I'm almost, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. Hi. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day through a new song, through a new song, through an end time prophetic prayer and worship movement. Declare his glory among the nations. Someone say nations. That's why we always should be involved in nations. And his wonders among all peoples. Which means we're to do this in the midst of the Muslim countries. Come on, in the midst of the God haters. We're to sing a new song. God says, I'm going to put an end time prophetic prayer and worship anointing upon my people. I'm going to fill them with a mouth, uh, with a new song, with a worship that the world and a sound the world has never heard. And it's going to penetrate into the darkest regions of the world. And it's going to reveal my salvation and my love and my mercy and my grace and my wondrousness and my awesomeness and even the fear of me to deliver men's souls. I saw this. I was in Kenya. And I was ministering. We, we ministered one night to a group of worship pastors. Spirit of God hit that place. Talked about the greatest ministry of a worship leader is the personal ministry to him. I said, would you prepare as much? Would you pray as much? Would you study as much? Would you practice as much if you never ministered before man again? but only ministered before his throne. Place, they were all on their faces, weeping and crying, calling out to God. And I saw, I saw the four angels. They were outside of the city of Nakuru. God spoke to me, and he said, I'm sending them. They're on their way, coming to Nakuru. That was before they invited me back. That was before I knew about the prayer conference, which they don't know yet. It's going to be a prayer and worship conference. An end time prophetic prayer and worship anointing. God says, I'm sending the four angels. A new worship movement. Verse 4, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord glory, do his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of? In the beauty of? In this end time prophetic prayer and worship anointing with new songs unto God, holiness is going to stop being a word we want to avoid because we're going to start seeing it's beautiful. Yeah. Holiness will not be looked upon as bondage and legalism. It will be looked on as desirable and beautiful. Why wouldn't it be? He is holy and he is beautiful. Hallelujah. See, those who want to run from holiness and want to label it as legalism have not had the revelation of the beauty of holiness. Come on, amen. I don't condemn them. But through this end time prophetic prayer and worship anointing, when God first comes near us in intimacy and then to us in revival, we will see the beauty of holiness, and he will purify and sanctify us, and we're going to shake off all the junk of the world because we won't want it anymore because we're just going to be so passionately in love with him, so ravenously in love with him. We're so close to him. We're just going to be, oh, we don't even want to be around that. And in that end time movement, he will come for us. Shh. Woo. Verse 13, Psalm 96. For he, same verse on, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. 
The whole psalm about singing a new song to the Lord and this end time worship is about an end time movement right before his coming. And then Psalm 98, last verse. Are you all with me? Boring, come on up. Play some time to stop preaching, preacher. Woo! Are you getting this? Say it after me. Say, there is an end time prophetic prayer and worship movement. That will usher in the glory of the Lord. And establish God's authority on the earth. Psalm, that's what we're pressing for. We saw it with David last week. Why David lived such a high standard and demanded people around him live a high standard. He was trying to create an atmosphere for God's glory to rest. That's why David hired 4,000 musicians and 288 full-time singers. And then 4,000 gatekeepers. The gatekeepers were there to instruct the people in holiness, to instruct the people in how to properly worship God, and to protect the temple from the spirits of the outside world and influence from coming in. My God. David took it serious. And that was for one temple, a tent. He didn't even build a temple yet. And God is looking for a people that are going to be so in love with him and so honor his presence that they'll do whatever it takes to guard and protect that presence because they know if God's presence can come and rest and his glory can be manifested, he will be lifted up and he will draw all men to himself. See, pursuing holiness and separation to God is never, was never designed by God to become an exclusive club where we push everybody out. It was designed by God to host his glory so people would come in. And that's why when you're pursuing holiness and you're guarding that atmosphere internally, you also always have to reach out with the mercy seat at whoever comes in, at whatever condition they are in, wherever place they are in, and you love on them. You don't clean them up on the way in. Because you didn't clean, got cleaned up on the way in. You got cleaned up when you saw the beauty. When you saw the beauty. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. There it is again. For he has done marvelous things. See, this new song is going to come out of experience. You're going to sing a new song because you're having so many encounters with God. Come on, you You just, you, you can't help. Come on, you ever experience that? Come out of a service and you just want to sing? I, I came out of these services in Kenya. I was just singing. I was just singing. Oh, God, you're so good. Your beauty, your holiness, your righteousness, your love, your mercy, your tenderness. Just, just glowing. When I came out of that meeting and they were talking about all the prophecies, I couldn't, I sat back, I said, oh God, me, how, how could, how could it, how could you be speaking to so many people in a country about me coming? But I tell you, nobody doubted. They knew that they knew, and I knew that I knew it was God. I, I was so awed and so humbled. All I could do is just sing. How great is our God. How great is our God. Someone say he's great. For he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His righteousness he has revealed in the sight of the nations. Shout joyfully, verse 4, to the Lord. All the earth, break forth in song. Rejoice and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the sound of a song. There it is again. With trumpets and the sound of a horn. We need some horn players in this church. Say, I never played a horn. Pick it up and ask God to help you. Come on, somebody. Amen. Woo. Shout joyfully before the Lord, the King. Verse 9, why? For he is coming, there it is again, to judge the earth with righteousness he shall judge the world and the peoples with 
equity. Let God arise. Lift your hands and say, let God arise. Say it, let the God arise. Come on, say it, let God arise. Let God arise. Shakaraba Shande. Shakaraba Shande. I'm going to read this verse. Come on. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. That's not just people. It's the things in our heart that hate him. It's the sin and the, the, the division and the delusion that hates him. When he arises, those things are going to flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so let them drive away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked and wickedness in our hearts perish at the presence of the Lord. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice. That means to sing before God. Let them rejoice exceedingly. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. Oh, lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. 